Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez with Converge, and welcome to our third video in our parametric modeling series. In the first video, we talked about creating global variables and linking dimensions. And in the second video, we created this part where we have a plate based on our global variables, and we created a pattern based on a sketch reference. Now this is obviously a great option, especially if you need to drive a pattern based on the length of a line. And we did this all using those construction lines and those references to create a curve-driven pattern. I want to take a look at this process to create the exact same thing by using equations and some intelligence inside of the equation manager. You guys can decide ultimately which option works best for you, whether it's using the construction lines or whether it's using some intelligence inside of the equation manager, but let's get started. If you haven't followed the second video series to create this part, I suggest that you do that first to understand the application of that method, but ultimately it won't be needed to follow along with this video. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create a sketch for the location of our first hole or the seed in the pattern. So I'm going to click this top face and start a new sketch. And I'm simply going to place a circle that is to the left of the origin. I'm going to hit escape, select its center point, control select the origin, and make sure that those two are horizontal. I then am going to apply a dimension from the left edge to the center point of that circle equals, and I'm going to use the whole edge offset value. I then need to apply a diameter. So again, equals whole diameter and link that to our global variable. So now we have a fully defined hole. I can say, okay, and I can do an extrude cut. In this case, I'm going to say through all. So now we've created the seed for our pattern. But the next thing that we need to do is a linear pattern and we need to figure out exactly how many instances we need to go across the plate. In order to do that, we're going to go into our equation manager and we're going to start creating an equation to help drive that amount. So we know that we have several values inside of our equation manager, such as box width. So the box width is going to help us determine exactly how many instances we need. So we're going to create a whole pattern spacing and this is going to be an equation that's going to drive the spacing between each of these holes. Now in order to drive this I'm going to start by doing an open parentheses and then we're going to take the box width and we're going to subtract parentheses again two times and we're going to use the whole edge offset value. So what this is doing right now is this is giving us the length of that construction line that's inside the offset edges of our original reference sketch. So we've taken that 10 inch box width and we've subtracted one inch from each side, leaving us an eight inch line. The next thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what the spacing is going to be between those holes. We know that we have a certain number of holes based on hole num. We're going to use that value and we're going to link it. So we want to take the whole num value. I'm going to close the parentheses to finish off the first part of our equation. So essentially we have eight inches. And what we want to do is we want to divide that up by the number of spaces that we need. So I'm going to use divide, and then I'm going to start another parentheses, and we're going to take the number of holes minus one. And then we're going to close that and hit enter. So what this is allowing us to do is it's allowing us to figure out the spacing that's going to go between each hole. Because even though we have eight holes, we have seven spaces in between, and that's why we take the whole number and we subtract one. So now in order to drive this, we can do a linear pattern and the direction is going to be this edge. And the feature that we want to use is that cut extrude two. In terms of the spacing and number of instances, if we come in here and we hit equals, the number of instances is going to be whole num and the spacing value is going to be the equation that we created for whole pattern spacing. We're going to say, okay, and then OK this feature. So now we've taken the exact same pattern from circular or curve driven pattern one and linear pattern two, and we've replicated it two different ways. The first way used our reference sketch. We offset the sketch by using equal constraints on three different lines and setting one of those lines equal to the whole offset. We then used the length of that line as a curve driven pattern, and we equally spaced our pattern across the whole thing. The second instance we used doing completely by the equations. We set up an equation that was based on the number of instances that we needed 
as well as the length of the box that we're driving. So this means that if we go ahead and move this down and we open up our equation manager, we can modify the box width value and let's make it 15 and let's rebuild this and, and update it. Let's minimize this a little bit so we can see. So both of them update exactly the same. You can see in one case, the whole pattern spacing changes to 1.85714. Now, if we set this equal to, let's say 20, and we rebuild it, again, they update exactly the same. So mathematically speaking, we have replicated the geometry in two separate ways exactly the same. Now, of course, the application of using the construction lines was much more straightforward and much easier to do, and it offers the same level of robustness. It doesn't have to solve any equations in order to rebuild that. And you can see here that the equation is fairly simple, but we could add some more intelligence to it. Let's go into tools, down to evaluate, and let's take a look at performance evaluation. So our curve-driven pattern takes 51% of the time to rebuild. It's 0 0.02 in order to rebuild that curve-driven pattern. However, if we look at the rebuild time for our linear pattern, which is based on those equations, it doesn't take any time at all. So keep in mind that even though it seems like it would take a little bit longer to evaluate those simple equations, it's actually taking longer for a curve-driven pattern because it's not necessarily intended to apply directly to a straight line. It's meant to go along separate curves and, and it has to do a lot of calculation to figure out the spacing based on that line and various things that have to go on in the background. So the whole file only takes 0.03 seconds to rebuild, so obviously that's negligible in the grand scheme of things. But as these patterns become more complicated, and maybe you can't drive these holes based on a reference edge, maybe you need some of that equation intelligence, keep in mind that there are some benefits and drawbacks to each of those based on your specific geometry. Now we're not quite done with this file yet. There is one other method I do want to talk about, but for right now, make sure that you save your file and we're gonna pick up in the next video talking about using if else statements to help drive the number of holes that are patterned based on the overall length of our part. So once again, thanks for watching. Hope you guys picked up a few things and we'll see you in the next one.